Perfect. Beautiful. Jackson, you yeah. brought him aboard. I, I may be a big fan of yeah, this man, go. but you oh, brought him in I thought you were going to take house. it with how much energy you were bringing, but okay. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to episode 286 of the official podcast. Today, we have an extraordinary guest joining us. He's the defeater of uh, scammers. He's the man with a million voices. He is Kit Boga. Thank you for joining us, man. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. Please, uh, why, don't, why don't you start this uh episode off by informing everyone in our audience what it is you do on youtube and just Ooh. all the good deeds that it entail yeah i mean i think one way to describe it is i play predominantly old characters <laughs> like i i change my voice to be an old man and i try to make uh like robo callers or scammers just hate me i think is pretty much <laughs> what i do uh I, the, be I talk the best thing them. about it, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> the best thing about it, uh, from everything I've seen, is you do a wonderful job at wasting scammers' time. That's like the best thing about it, because every minute they spend talking to you know elderly version of you, um, is is a like their minutes they're not spent scamming actually elderly sure. people in the world. That's what I love about your content, and it's obviously entertaining and funny. Thanks. Yeah, I think it. that's kind of how I started out was um, my grandmother had uh, dementia and I like she had gotten scammed and not not by like one of the scammers that I call a completely different scam. But um, <laughs> I was just thinking you hunted them down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Life hell. This was the start yeah. personal for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I found them and I've I haven't let them alone. No. <laughs> but I figured, well, if I'm on the phone with them, then I guess like someone's grandma isn't on the phone. Um, mm -hmm. But it's yeah, it's obviously grown quite a bit from the origin story. Yeah, you've you've definitely <laughs> grown from the origin. You've got like automated tools now and all these different like face cam features. And it, the show your show's <laughs> gotten really elaborate. It's very impressive. It's also just I, really well constructed too, and how yeah. efficient it is at never tipping them off that you're like playing with them. Like these will go for <laughs> nine, ten hours sometimes with a single mm -hmm. caller. It's amazing. Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Originally, I would tell them partially because there's this moment where you know, like taking off your mask, and like it was me, I was messing <laughs> with you, and they'd get mad. But I realized later if I didn't do that, I, um. Sometimes it would go for days or, or months. I have these guys right now. It's been I've spent 38 hours with them on the phone <sighs> across like two months, and they've given me <laughs> something like 36 of their bank accounts here in the U.S. Oh because they God. just think that I'm gonna give them money. <laughs> like so, every week <laughs> they just call me up and they're like, "Hey, how's it going? Should I give you a bank account today? Are you ready to give me? Are you ready to wire me money?" <laughs> wow. So, I think the uh, yeah. the absolute highlight for me in the technology you made is the fake Google Redemption web page. Uh, so yeah. you, uh, yeah, yeah, you can probably explain it better than me. But the scammers always want Google Play cards because that's just how they're going to get their it, money. It's their currency. It, yeah. yeah, it's it's the national <laughs> currency of India. That's right. And uh, <laughs> and yeah. you've made a page where you can redeem, l pretend to redeem the card of like five hundred dollars or some amount, and some of them just when they see that you've put the money on your account instead of giving it to them, they they do oh, not God, like that. So good. <laughs> <laughs> they lose their mind. Yeah, me I mean, so you pretty much described it. Uh, my background is like software engineering mm -hmm. and code stuff, and so I hacked together this like Chrome extension basically that that makes the Google Play Store uh when I click redeem or whatever it it pops up a fake redemption box and anything that's any 16 digit alphanumeric <laughs> you know code will say that $500 got added and the scammers don't know any better uh, although technically I could just type you know the number 1 16 times <laughs> I just never yeah. do that so. <laughs> so what I'm hearing right here is you've become the scammer. You scam poor Google. They give yes. you that money. <laughs> You're scamming these guys <laughs> out of horrible. their time, Kit. What the hell? Come on. That too, I have yeah. become what I Just swore to destroy. <laughs> yeah. Why? So is is the reason that they? I imagine the reason they only accept Google Play 
uh, in these scam businesses uh, is because it's like untraceable. Is that the only reason? Um, well, they do accept Sorry. all kinds of other cards. Like the last me first. Oh Sephora. yeah, I just think cards in general. Sorry, not just okay. Yeah, play. yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's untraceable. And I think it it's easy to sell on like aftermarket stuff. So the general idea is, if they get a five hundred dollar Google Play card, maybe they can sell it for four hundred dollars and they'll get whatever a hundred bucks of that or something. I don't like it's uh, percentage based. Mm -hmm. And then depending on the time of year and the demand, there's probably like a, a gift card stock market. I don't know. Um, underground dark web stuff. But they'll ask me for different cards. It just kind of depends. I'll watch a good bit of scam baiting. Like I'm also a fan of Jim Browning. Jim Browning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure, yeah. I think one guy is just called yeah. Scam Baiter as well who's coming up. Mm -hmm. um, and didn't they describe that... They actually don't make a lot of money from this. If you have like a five hundred dollar card, let's say they'll maybe only earn like thirty bucks or something Ooh. very, very small from it. Yeah, the guy who actually took the card. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. only on the individual level. The these companies yeah. make like billions. Oh no, they no, scam I'm, so I'm, much. I'm talking about the actual scammer, but it's like the manager oh, yeah. takes Is like ninety percent thing? or something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. The, mm -hmm. the workers thing, are commission paid. Uh, no, okay. the workers are commission based. At least in mm -hmm. a few of them, yeah. might not be all of them, but some are most are commission I based. I think that's what most people would find surprising about these scammers is like I always had the uh, mental image of people that scam these people. Like they're just like individuals right. on an individual level, but they're actually like full organizations in <laughs> yeah. these in these right. countries that have like <laughs> business leaders, business management people. Uh, accountants and stuff working in there. It, it is, it is and insane. And their CEOs are flaunting around on Facebook holding like hundreds right. in their yeah. hands yeah. and driving sports cars and shit. They're totally some, just fine with it. Some of them do have a legitimate operation attached to it, though, for yeah. the sake of appearances. So a lot of it is them believing that that side is stronger than their scam side so they can like take more sure. pride in their money. So like there's that CEO that was on the new Jim Browning episode who like spreads his like spread eagle on Facebook with money and shit. And it's because <laughs> he, he knows he can get away with it. And also from what I understand, a lot of the officials are also in on the scam. So it's kind of like mm -hmm. hush hush. Okay. With some of the corrupt powers that be over there. Yeah. There, there are some groups that are, you know, just two, two or three guys running it out of their apartment type of a thing. But, there's also really big business. Can you can <laughs> you always tell when it's those two to three, uh, like you know, the small business owners um, <laughs> in this situation? Can you tell when it's them as opposed to these uh, multinational sometimes, conglomerates that you're facing? Yeah, I mean, sometimes <laughs> it's just as simple as the big call centers usually don't waste as much time on me because they're not as desperate and they have like quotas almost. Mm -hmm. That's the way I imagine uh, it. True. Like the boss is like, you haven't scammed enough this week, so stop talking yeah. to that old lady, kind of a thing. <laughs> Whereas the smaller groups, um, they'll, they'll, what do they call it? Sunk cost fallacy. They'll kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Right. spend right, yeah. the next month talking to only me because I'm their only lead. <laughs> so are those the, yeah. uh, people that you'll call them and they'll just be like asleep or <laughs> in the middle of <laughs> lunch or something and they'll just take it at any time. Sometimes. Yeah. They spend <laughs> some control weird... their lives. You know? <laughs> There's That's definitely so cool. been some weird moments. Uh, like I've had them like answer while they're in the bathroom and stuff. Oh no! Just weird. <laughs> yeah, God. I think when they really believe you're going to give them way. money. Oh yeah. god. No, I was just going to say I think the sunken cost fallacy is a really good way of putting it because from their perspective they've already spent you know twenty hours uh, chasing chasing this Google Play gift card from you. What's another 20 hours at that point? And then it just snowballs and snowballs and they're stuck in like an infinite loop. It's great. And they're probably oh, thinking like... Sorry, go ahead. go ahead. They're probably thinking... Because um, sometimes... So I have like fake bank accounts and they'll see $300,000 in there. So they're thinking, well, if only... If I spend another couple hours and I can get that $300,000, if I spend another couple weeks, right? That's a lot of money. Um, and they just keep telling themselves, well, there's a $300,000 prize at the end. Of course, it's fake and they never get anything, but 
Yeah. Sad. Sad mm-hmm. for them. Uh, that rem- yeah. You just reminded me of something. Does anyone remember, like, it must have been six or seven years ago now, there used to be a website, and it got popular on Reddit, where you'd type in a phone number, and it would robocall that number forever. Literally forever. <laughs> to take up the entirety of that line. Whatever happened to that? I imagine mm, that'd be like no. a great tool against these scammers. Just... I don't know that one. You, you guys don't know what I'm talking about? Was it no. like... I think... um... I'm going to Google it. I think I currently there's a spinoff of that that works kind of like something Kit does, where if you give them a phone number and they call it, it'll have an AI like infinitely just kind of answer it and pretend it can't hear it and be like... Yo, yeah, that's, 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 great. Yeah. that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, they, yeah. they had one like oh. a, a while back from Reddit, and it would endlessly forever dial whatever number you gave it to <laughs> dial, and it would never <laughs> ever stop. That's a terrifying like call tool. flooding. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've heard of too, call flooding stuff. Yeah, it was a I'm call actually, flooding AI. Can't yeah. you just block the number? Yeah, I mean, eventually, but there's, there's definitely it. ways around it. <laughs> but don't they usually call from private numbers? Do, do you actually get the numbers of the of the scammers? Not usually. They they just, harder. Yeah, not usually. It's so easy to spoof or get numbers. Like mm. I have dozens of VoIP yeah. numbers, um, and then you can spoof whatever number you want. So it's pretty hard to get actual phone numbers. Occasionally, <laughs> they'll give me their WhatsApp numbers. Oh, <laughs> um, like they're, they're getting intimate. Yeah. Usually when they think that, um, cause I play a, a character sometimes who's like a, let me see if this actually works. Like I talk like this and I flirt with them and they believe I'm, did you, did that go through? I don't know if that went through, but yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah, dude, you they think I'm some, on. That was cool. Yeah. yeah was, <laughs> and so they'll like, over here. Oh boy. They'll want anything. picks, you know, and can you bring and her so back, kid? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I want picks. Sorry. That was pretty good. <laughs> she has a sister. Yeah. You'd rather talk to her. <laughs> um, I was trying to th- yeah, I've, I've seen some call flooding stuff. Um, I, I myself have been working on a little bit of an AI to call them, uh, which has been fun. <laughs> I've only really shown that on Twitch though. Not, not much on YouTube, but so I, that's, think, uh... I think it'll become a thing. That leads to a question I really wanted to ask you. You do a lot of, uh, like, additional work around the scam baiting. You've got a little bot that tries to automatically call them and all these tools that we were talking about. What do you think is your best payoff? So, like, a tool working or a prank succeeding. What do you think is, like, one of your biggest successes in this? Hmm. It, success in terms of the uh, YouTube just channel or like uh, in what, any, anything, how do you define success? Yeah. Let's spend 30 minutes talking about success. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would say more a particular moment where something worked perfectly, where it really all came oh. together. I mean, there's definitely I, I, I think there's two things that come to mind. One is if I if I spend a day with a scammer. I get their bank account information and then I redeem a gift card and they lose their mind like they're freaking out and screaming. Mm-hmm. It kind of is the classic. I, I checked everything off the box. You know, I wasted their <laughs> day. I got some information to send to like fraud people and now they're mad. Um, but then on the the tool side, like the AI side, I think I've been excited working on it because it's sort of like cloning myself. You know, if I had. If I had eight of these bots running all day taking phone calls and I could waste time all day, right? It would just be, the numbers add up a lot quicker than, so in that regard, the success so far, there's been moments where I've had the the bot and mind you right now it's using the, the, well, Amazon Polly, which is the like Streamlabs text-to-speech, you know, that classic Oh, like soda yeah. poppins voice and all that yeah stuff. the donation readers mm-hmm. right the donation readers yeah yeah mm-hmm. uh right now it's using those voices <laughs> and if it spends 15 minutes with the scammer i'm i'm like a giddy little you know i'm <laughs> having a field day because <laughs> it's it's so bad it sounds so fake and yet the scammers talk to it so <laughs> that's a success i guess like i said i love the idea of wasting scammers time um 
like it's just the be- it's the best element of it because obviously if scammers just constantly get their time wasted it um it, it, i think it would lead to scammers not being interested in scamming anymore obviously maybe uh, that they'd, yeah. they'd find better uses of their time i would hope and so there'd be less scams <laughs> in the world uh but so i i love the idea of like expanding this idea and getting like entire competing call centers together, maybe like filled with uh, like theater majors or anything like that, <laughs> uh, and giving them jobs, and then basically just like making entire businesses out of what you do. Uh, yeah, yeah. Over, Set up over, a counter call center. I've thought yeah. about that a little bit. If I'm, uh, I think it would be fantastic because theater major, theater major students obviously need jobs as well. So that this is a good yeah. idea for them. Uh, it creates jobs. Uh, Australia over here, the current government just got elected two days ago they they've pledged to uh like uh create create like anti-scam divisions in our law enforcement and stuff like that so you know that they're they're interested and i imagine they'll they'll put some money towards my idea if i take it to them uh to my local representative down the road (laughs) yeah hey excuse me into every phone Uh, right like when you get a call alexa should be like hey this looks like a spam call want me to fuck with them and then you say yes alexa go Oh, God, that'd be yeah. so nice. They kind of do... I forgot the name of the app. There is some app out there that does yeah, something. Yeah, I've, I've got that. Like that. Um, if you have a Google Fi phone, like one made by Google, and you're on Google yeah. Fi, they will have a assistant, like an automated assistant. If the number looks suspicious, oh, right. they'll answer it for you. And they'll be like, hi, tell us why you're calling and this and this. And if they are either a robocall or don't give a good answer, they'll just like not even connect the call through. They just, it won't even ring <laughs> yeah. your phone. I have the, I've had I've that on that. for like so two good. years now, and it yeah. is the most useful fucking thing on my phone. It's I'm not so a cons- I'm not nice. like that much of a conspiracy theorist, so sorry if this sounds like it is, but I do I I do think that some of these phone companies or uh, internet service providers, whatever you want to call it, could be doing more. And it's kind of like, like, why aren't you? So a good example would be, and I know YouTube is massive, but I'm willing to bet that right now, if you were to type in something like Elon Musk live stream or Elon Musk Bitcoin, you guys have probably seen this. Oh, yeah. There's, oh, there's like yeah, they're dozens everywhere. of... Yeah, oh, and it's not yeah, hard to get rid of these, right? Like, it's no. not complicated. I mean, that, I people, uh, people do the Elon thing on Twitch, and they jump, mm-hmm. thanks to viewbotting, to, like, the top three channels in Just Chatting, and they're there for a while. <laughs> they're well, what, there what for is a scam, like, Twitch. What, what is a scam, though? I feel like everyone it's knows. It's crypto. It's, yeah. it's just, yeah. it's a crypto address, like, send, send your crypto yeah. here and I'll double it, it and it's Elon they, Musk clips. Yeah, they play <laughs> the Elon clips and they put the title, like, Elon Crypto Giveaway for Charity yeah. or something like that, and mm. they have the address and it says, if you give this much, we'll double it, but they just keep what you give them. That's such an, that's such an old scam, though. You see that all the time on I Twitter know. in general. Mm-hmm. It um, yeah, reminds me of the fact, RuneScape. Like, Double your items type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. The the classic. Classic. <laughs> you brought up RuneScape now, Charlie can like join in. <laughs> it's a RuneScape scam, but for libertarian Bitcoiners, yeah. <laughs> and it's so... Uh, I don't think it is a conspiracy theory. I think you're completely right. I think they could clamp down on this fucking garbage. It's like YouTube and the awful comments section. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Yeah. You're owned by Google, one of the biggest tech companies in the history of our species. I do not believe you when you say that you can't do anything against a comment that says, Hey, want to see my nudes? Go to myflatass.com slash exe or whatever. <laughs> right. like, come on. Kaya, why are you making fun of How many times is Kaya going to fall for this? <laughs> <laughs> right. I have a guy like, right on. now on my WhatsApp. Like, I have a fake WhatsApp account who's pretending he's pretending to be me in my YouTube comment section. And I'm talking to him as me. It's really weird. It's really confusing. I, I get that too on on YouTube community posts. Like after they sit for a while, people will comment, and then the reply will be someone with my picture and my name, and they'll be like, "Thank you so much for commenting. Yeah. Please reach out on WhatsApp to my manager Josh. He is a very right. nice man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He will give you Bitcoin. Josh does right. slap though. To be fair, he's really great. He's done so much for me. I mean, look at all those comments he's posting. Yeah, yeah make sure you go click. On it. <laughs> but it's not hard to i don't feel like it's hard to solve that like it must be no. so straightforward and and like you said these are multi 
what are they trillion dollar companies i think they're huge at yeah. this point amazon is yeah um and amazon, they apple i mean google they're, they're just they have no excuse none you're a tech company you invented these, the these shit com- you're these companies AI. These companies it's aren't known exactly. for spending money on things that they don't expect to make money out of. Sure. Like, yeah. what, what is the be- what is the benefit to them for doing that? Yeah, but what is the benefit of like, okay, you, you go on these websites and sometimes you are befuddled by the fucking decisions they make. Like now on YouTube, every video that's <laughs> shorter than a minute is automatically a short, so you no longer get the little bar oh. that you can scrub the video with. Like, what the fuck? Why? I didn't know that. Can't you I like do something fucking useful? This is infuriating. Yeah, I don't they, watch they, too they many literally went videos, and they. But- they retroactively yeah. every video on YouTube that is under a minute long is now a YouTube short. It's, it's in wow. fucking. It's furiating. also incredibly frustrating because some of them are put in this weird phone resolution now, and it looks like shit. Oh really? Yeah, it's not great. I hate the shorts feature too. Damn you, TikTok! They also open in like the, a different player on browser rather than the regular one sometimes, and it's it just sucks. It's just so convoluted and dumb. It must be them going after tiktok i assume like, I, had, I had someone the other day oh yeah who, absolutely yeah so this isn't a flex it's gonna sound like a flex but i was on i was accidentally on the front page of reddit last week okay and, not a all flex. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, know, we bring you on our show so, and you, okay yeah go ahead please tell us so, your incredible accomplishments but the reason i bring it up is i i can't remember off the top of my head but let's say it was something like the clip got uh, 7 million views or something. And, but someone stole that clip, put it on TikTok, and overnight it got 20 million views. Yep. And so yeah. it's like, yeah. that's TikTok. Holy, a lot, yeah. <laughs> Holy smokes. So I but, can imagine um, they, they're trying to. Does, like, it, does anyone actually make money on TikTok from mm, those kinds of no, uh, yes. shows? No, I, no, I, I, no, no. I, so I was going to preface this by saying I know the personalities on TikTok then go on to make money through other aspects. Mm-hmm. But I can't imagine the monetization oh. on short form content like that is ever it's really terrible. profitable. Most, it's beyond terrible. Most TikTok personalities make their money through sponsorships, but oh, also like mm-hmm. videos videos make like <laughs> nothing, absolutely mm-hmm. nothing comparatively. Old, well, it's in fact the only way you get paid for shorts on YouTube and TikTok is through their creator fund program which pays you fuck, I looked it up a week ago. I think it's a dollar for a million views or yeah, something, something like pathetic. that. <laughs> something yeah. absolutely pathetic. What the yeah. fuck? I could pay you better than that. Yeah, no, it, is, it is outrageously low. Yeah. That's shocking. If you get our podcast a million views, I'll be I'll pay you 10 bucks. How about that? Ooh. Well, you, I think I'll YouTube's a little bit better than uh, TikTok for shorts. And I looked at a channel that was a shorts channel on YouTube. It had, I think it was... 300 million views in a month and they got five or six grand oh do you have a shorts channel yeah i have a shorts channel it's mine is i I don't get anything from the creator fund uh, because it's not even close dude again everyone has a shorts channel if you have a video shorter than a minute you have a shorts (laughs) channel now yeah even though you didn't mean to i have one without even trying people clip uh, lines from how it's actually made all the time and tons of them are going around TikTok right now and there's like whole channels dedicated just ripping them. <laughs> how much oh, money everywhere. do you think we would make if we split up the entire podcast archive into 10 second clips <laughs> and upload them to TikTok? <laughs> you could probably make a probably like a quick little python script to do it automatically for you too. Just uh, that'd be Oh, cool. that'd be amazing. Do it, on, do it on your stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some of our clips would just actually be silence, just 10 seconds yeah. of silence. <laughs> yeah, we use the unedited video so we have more comment to clip. Yeah. <laughs> Could you set up a bot that just, whenever a scammer calls you, it plays our podcast for them? That could yeah, be that too. That'd be funny. <laughs> In our ad Get reads. Up as long that as way. it's more than a dollar per mini- million uh, minutes. Million <laughs> yeah. what, was, what if you. Oh, man, what if you like did set up a way to like send your videos out to the scammers as well, so you're constantly getting viewers that way? I don't think huh. that, that, that's kind of like a bot. Farm, Is it against right? but it's, Toss TOS? Yeah, maybe. I, uh, funny enough, sometimes they do. The scammers will recognize my voices, and they'll be like, "Oh, they'll they'll say, Kiboga, I'm your biggest fan. Like I I watch all your I videos." I saw you on Reddit. 
<laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think they're sometimes I think they're just trying to seem good, like win the situation. Right. But I find it ironic that, oh, so you, you're actually paying me, you know, by watching my videos as I'm trying yeah. to. Speaking, Shut down your stuff. <laughs> speaking on the uh, trying to seem good, it seems that sometimes there's a strategy where they will like continually double down on ignorance and they're like, no, it really is Microsoft support. This really will help your computer. How much of yeah. that? How much of that do you think is legit? How many employees do you think are just told, hey, we're helping fix computers and you need to do these steps to do it? That's a tough one. Mm. I, I think I've lost some of my. Uh, in, in the beginning, I was way more open to that idea, let's say. <laughs> but as time has gone on, I've lost some way of my patience. Yeah. Um, I mean, lost for faith. sure, there. Are, yeah, for sure, there's some people that they see an ad for a call center job, and they are told to sell internet security or something. And some of them don't really know what they're doing. They're mm -hmm. typing commands on a computer and following a piece of paper, and they don't understand it. I just think yeah, but it's pretty they easy gotta know that to, you don't right. fix Windows with Google Play cards. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of them don't. They'll actually partner with U.S. companies and process credit card payments, and they'll tell you. They'll say, "No, we're not like <laughs> we're not like the other guys. We're not like the other scammers. We uh, we won't take gift cards. We will." will install they'll actually install some pirated version of a <laughs> of a antivirus software right <laughs> but and i think they will tell themselves at night that i'm helping people but in reality they just lie about everything yeah. <laughs> that always so feel like me... anyone that finds themselves in those that kind of position where they're working in a scam center i don't think they care at the end of the day no no, that always that makes me not. wonder why they don't like retrofit the scam into actual tech support and be like, hey, give us 200 bucks. We'll go on your computer, run security essentials like UC cleaner, run malware bites like, yeah. you know, it's it's not a great service. You, they're, you're overpaying, but at least they do something. Well, know? they do. Some of them do. And they uh. use it as a uh, like a way to collect information to scam you later. It's kind of oh, sick. God. I, actually, a friend of mine, well, an acquaintance of mine, his. It happened to his mother-in-law. She needed to get her printer fixed. She Googled probably Yahoo, uh, like Ooh. HP printer support, <laughs> clicked the wrong website, talked to some scammers, but they actually installed the drivers and actually installed her printer. But then a week <laughs> later, they called and said, like, there's network infections. So we need to, uh. like do all oh, this stuff i thought i thought this was gonna go a different direction i thought you were gonna say they called and said that she needs to buy more ink or something like that <laughs> <laughs> i mean <laughs> well ink is just a scam anyway but yeah all printers are massive scams it's fucking crazy austin mcconnell had a fantastic <laughs> yep. video breaking Such that a down good video on yeah it. i don't know that one i'll have to look it up well, we definitely know that Athletic Greens and Magic Spoon aren't scams. Isn't that right, boys? That's right. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's I right. I know it in my heart. And I know it in my tummy when I talk about Magic Spoon and Athletic Greens because they're good things that'll fill you up. Okay, everyone, everyone, let's start with Magic Spoon. I want everyone's complete undivided attention, their complete silence. I want your focus. I want you to just listen to what I'm saying because I'm talking about Magic Spoon, one of the most delicious cereals I've ever eaten. Stop the tape, put down the character, drop the drop the goofy stuff that we're talking about. This is me, it's your boy, it's Andrew. I'm talking directly to you listening out there. I, I, I actually love Magic Spoon. I have tried six or seven different flavors and they're all just very, very good. The one that's like Fruit Loops, it's a better Fruit Loops. The one that's the chocolate one, that one's pretty good too. I don't even like chocolate that much. It's not my favorite dessert, not even close, but it's just, Yummy. It, it, I don't, it's, I don't know what the fuck you want me to say. It's yummy. Okay, let me say, let me say some specific things. How about that? How about the fact it's zero grams of sugar? How about the fact it's a cereal with 13 to 14 grams of protein and only four net carbs? You want to know why it's better than the competitive brands, the children's brands? Because it's not loaded with crap that's just bad for you. It just tastes good. And it's really not, not good. Does that make sense? You're smart enough to know that it makes sense because you had a balanced breakfast. 
featuring Magic Spoon. Click the link below to get some Magic Spoon cereal today. Build your very own variety box using code OFFICIAL for $5 off. You can choose from the best-selling cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, cookies and cream, and maple waffle flavors, plus other awesome flavors like blueberry and cinnamon, which is my favorite Digimon. A Magic Spoon product is so good, it's backed by a 100% happiness guarantee. You can return it, no questions asked, if for some reason your taste buds are broken. Click the link below, use code OFFICIAL, or go to magicspoon.com slash official to save $5 off your order today. You can also get it in Canada and the UK. Yay! But it's not green. I don't think any of the flavors are green the last time I checked. So a lot of people say there's conventional wisdom in eating your greens. You got spinach, you got kale, not lettuce. Lettuce is a waste of your time. But Athletic Greens is going to give you a good dose of those greens that you know you need to eat with just one delicious scoop of AG1 made by Athletic Greens. You're going to be absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens, which is like a Japanese transformational superpower from a Power Rangers type show. It's a special blend of ingredients to support gut health, nervous health, to immune system energy, all sorts of great stuff. I recently was at a convention in Orlando and I met a lot of you handsome folks. It was fucking great. And I constantly would go to the smoothie place because I just didn't have some time to eat and, you know, finagle around while I was sitting at the booth selling things and meeting people. So I just needed something to eat that was, like, drinkable, convenient. And constantly, whenever I asked for a smoothie, I would just go, hey, can you put some greens in there? Can you, like, add the kale mix, the blend mix? The It might have been Athletics Greens that they had. It, I, it just felt better to know that there was something nice going into my smoothie, you know, instead of just, like... I don't know, frozen yogurt or whatever they put in there to pretend is healthy. Oh, boy. Athletic Greens costs you less than $3 a day. You'll be investing in your health for a cheap price. They have over 7,000 five-star reviews, and they're recommended by pro athletes and us, which is more important. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. One scoop and a cup of water every day, that's all it's going to take for you and a million different pills and supplements to be crammed into your body. Because the idea is you're going to get the nutritional value of a million different pills and supplements without having to take a million different pills and supplements. Make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash the official. That's athleticgreens.com slash the official to take ownership over your health and pick the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Mmm, yummy, yummy. Okay, thank you, Ads. Yeah, thanks, thanks Ads. <laughs> See, Kip, that was painless. Thanks, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just smiled the whole time. Oh, that's perfect. Was, we'll no, yeah, we'll, we'll freeze you frame your smiling face over the <laughs> yeah. ad the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I had a, I have a bunch of questions, kid. I've been watching your stuff for like years now. I'm a big fan. Uh, so if you don't yeah, well, mind, so am I. You don't need to add to us. No, we but I'm like the bigger fan. Like, like You're Jackson's not special, Andrew. <laughs> nah, Jackson's like a two star. I'm like a four and a half. You know, it's like it's whatever. It's <laughs> out fun. of what rating? Uh, out of a hundred, we're not very dedicated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, oh, but uh, I wanted to know. Uh, so there's a lot of rumors that float around on how to prevent scams on your end. Like, okay, do I? Yeah. Not, never answer the phone. Do I answer it and then tell them to stop calling? Do I do this? Do I do that? What would you tell people who don't have elaborate thousand mm. dollar equipment setups to fight scam baiting? How should they go about stopping it? Yeah, well, this is maybe more tech savvy people. Funny enough, I on my I use VoIP numbers for my everyday communication. So like I my mom the number that she has isn't like a Sprint or Verizon number. It's like a, it's a VoIP number that forwards to my phone. And the a lot of the numbers that you buy are previously, like I bought it for $2 or something, right? And it previously was used for robocalling. <laughs> so when my mom, so initially when I would call my mom, she would see suspected spam caller or whatever, but it was me. And funny enough, <laughs> I never get 
robocalls on my VoIP numbers, uh, I think, because they know in their system. <laughs> that... So one one hack, the scammers will hate you, is if you just buy old VoIP numbers. But that's kind of complicated. So I think in an easier... Well, it's like playing the lottery, right? You don't know if you're going to get a scam number. Yeah. Right, you could also get one that's <laughs> on every list ever. So you're right. Yeah. I think <laughs> I usually tell people, I do notice, so those same VoIP numbers I use for the stream and the YouTube videos, once I talk to a scammer and they know I'm a human being, it's over. I'm on a bunch of lists. They sell my number to a bunch of other scam call centers and I will forever get calls on that number. So for sure, I I do think, even though it's somewhat of a myth, if you don't answer your phone, um, unless you know who's calling you, I think that's definitely a value. Um, mm-hmm. Do we need but it kind of like sucks, to especially if in you the first need... place. What was that? So I, I was going to say we need laws to prevent this sort of shit in the first place. It's ridiculous to me that like a company can just sell your phone number and all of your information to various well, companies in legal, the first right? place. That... Well, huh? it is you know, scam. Yeah. How is that for legal? car warranty? Well, you've heard of the car warranty scam. They're like, I've been trying to reach you about your yeah. car's extended warranty. No, well, well, here's how it works. Okay, here's why it's so easy to dox literally everyone on the internet, Jackson. When you sign up for shit like Apple or your ISP and such, buried deep in the terms of service and the privacy notice and shit, they say, hey, we may collect and share your data. What that means is <laughs> we're going to take your license plates, your fucking phone number, your email address, your internet usage history, and we're going to sell it to various companies that then use that data. Yeah, and but that's, that's fine. how you they're, have those services where it's trustworthy. Says, they wouldn't sell it to scammers. Right. Well, <laughs> they wouldn't do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right, but all, all that ends up happening diligence. is some, all an Indian company has to do is just buy like a database of all the phone numbers and that's it. Then they just put it into their system and call them one by one. Well, it's also not even, I mean, you can look up voter if you, I'm not telling people not to vote. I'm not trying to get political, but <laughs> if you look up <laughs> like voter information people who are registered for a political party all that stuff's just right there on google too so you can just go look up people within certain age groups in a certain city who are republican or something and you just have their data it's not even does it say their I mean, address it's like, um, yeah americans are weird yeah because like <laughs> in europe we have europe is like a really shitty country when it comes to privacy but at the very least we have some laws that protect shit like you know, yeah. our voting history, like it is very America, unique to America that you can just Google someone's name and some of the first results will be like, hey, pay five dollars and you can see this person's criminal history, like their criminal <laughs> record or pay five dollars <laughs> and you can see their car registration. Like, what, what the fuck? Why is this even yeah. online? Like, wh- who shared this? This is weird. That does. Ar- yeah, so I, I was going to say the the car warranty scam thing. A lot of people don't realize if you when you register your car at the you know department of motor vehicles or whatever in your state most states if not all of them don't quote me on this but most states will immediately sell that information and it's how they pay their bills basically and so you you register your car and suddenly you're getting calls from the car warranty people and postcards in the mail and it's because you gave it to the state it's pretty messed up it's sad. Don't, don't you have to pay for car registration and stuff? Yeah. Shouldn't that be paying for the, the DMV, yeah. I, So who do you sell this information to? Like, what if we sold all of our patrons' information to someone? We're not going to. Don't, don't, don't say that. Hustle. No, but what That's if, Jackson, happen. What if? <laughs> Think how much money we can make. What if? Who does it go to? Like, who's buying that information? <laughs> Whoever we choose. And again, the scammers and shit. Yeah. I think... Also, I think, like, literally the CDC, I think, was buying information like this to track people. I think that was a headline I read like a couple of weeks ago. They, people Maybe. buy this shit, dude. It's information. They all like it. Well, Wait, did sell, you just say the like, CDC was buying this information? That the, other the government, shouldn't they yes. have this information? <laughs> I, I have True. no idea. I don't know why they're buying it from like different companies. but a pre- Couldn't they just get it for all from the Who DMV or whatever? From? Where did you read that? Was it Facebook or like a verified? No. No, no. It was an actual <laughs> news article. I spoke. have no Facebook, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. I don't know if I know the exact organizations that buy that. That'd be interesting to to look so at. So, are they are there like entire businesses set up to handle the transaction of information? So, like Google, 
Twitter, all those uh, tech conglomerates or whatever, sell the information to this specific business, and then that business finds buyers? Like, are they middle? I, I would imagine they'd have Probably. to be middle. Probably. Probably. Um, because I, I would venture to guess that there's some, I guess I would say, l- legitimate companies, like sales organizations that want to know. The deal in data. I mean, I think it's... I, I'm I'm a pretty big uh, supporter of privacy, and I think it's crazy anyway. But found it. Um, <laughs> but I could you could argue that there's legitimate people who just want to sell you solar panels or something. I don't know, right? Oh, like just yeah. wanna... <laughs> Those are so aggressive. Have you guys? I'm assuming all of you have got the solar panel calls, right? Every yeah. now and then, yeah. Solar panels are great. What's wrong oh, with them? I've had door to door people come over and be like, "Hey, we want to install solar panels." <laughs> Oh, yeah, solar panels are great. What's your problem? It's a scam, Jackson. It, the solar panels are cool and everything, but these orgs, they'll call you like a million times a week about solar panels, but you can't hang up right away because the second you make the mistake of answering, they go into like a five paragraph long spiel about solar panels and how your place <laughs> you qualifies for up. solar panel installation. It's not like, it's not like the little speech puts up like a little hex on you or something that you it, can't uh, it's, move. It's, it's, you can just <laughs> hang up. Because they're actual human beings. I don't know. It just feels weird hanging up. It's like, oh man. Oh, human yeah. beings? They're telemarketers. Just hang up. <laughs> oh. Just start oh. screaming. <laughs> do you, do you... <laughs> Is he really afraid? Like, ah! So what do you do when you go to a a store and they say something like, do you want to sign up for our rewards program and get 5%? Like when they go through their whole spiel at the checkout, do you just smile? I throw my shit on the floor and run out the exit. Unironically, I just sit there and smile until they're done. I just say, (laughs) I appreciate it. I'm good. I sometimes feel bad. Like I know that they have to do it for their job, but I'm thinking I don't. I don't want to do any of this. I don't I, want to talk. I flip the tables on them. I go, do you want to? It sounds like a great deal. You should sign up. I, yeah, Andrew just sits I'm, there and debates them when it's ready. <laughs> I compare numbers, yeah. I do yeah. the math. Yeah. Do you believe I, um, in Jesus? I'm like the worst for that kind of stuff. Even shit that is like frustrating, I'll stand there and I'll take their slips or whatever. Like I, it was an election over here in Australia uh, a couple days ago. And yeah. we went and early voted and we went into the, uh, the, the, the early voting center and you know how like at polling places or whatever, they ha- have a bunch of volunteers and representatives at the f- front, like trying to coerce you into voting for their, uh, you know, representative or whatever. So they, I, I ended up with like every single one of their fucking slips yep. because I just, I couldn't say no. I, I made that like, same fucking oh. mistake. God, just I couldn't hurt their feelings. I made that same goddamn mistake. It was when they were voting to legalize marijuana in certain parts of Florida. So someone had a packet on the marijuana bills and I was like, oh, I should know specifically, you know, just in case I make a mistake. So I took that one. And then, like, ten other people walked up and they were like, here, you're taking literature, take this! And it <laughs> fucking sucked. They wouldn't leave me alone. Yeah, I just feel bad. I feel bad, I can't say no. That's no, how I like, feel uh, with, like... You're good. <laughs> okay. Uh, See, we're all too nice. We don't want to interrupt. Everyone's shy now. <laughs> it's yeah, just there's the, the ten-second the silent tactic. clip. Yeah, it's just the scummiest <laughs> tactic when they talk to you directly because it's so much harder to like decline someone to their face. It's, yeah. a, it's the mm-hmm. same thing with like with mall free samples. I always end up taking all the <laughs> fucking toothpicks of free samples at the mall just because it's. I feel bad ignoring them and saying no, even though I don't yeah. want it. Gotta yeah. be strong. It you works. Have to say it, no. Practice in they front of the mirror. appeal to your human emotions <laughs> yeah. and stuff. It's fucked. There's they entire do businesses that. built around the fact that you won't say no. It's a big part of salesmanship. This mm. should be made into a law that they can't guilt trip us by being human beings. <laughs> they should get, <laughs> not fair. They should get like <laughs> statues to do it. I don't know. It, I don't think they should be allowed to uh, put uh, people at the front of polling people. It's a form of intimidation, and I won't have it. I felt guilted. I don't know if I've experienced. I mean, maybe I have. I'm trying to think if I've experienced that. Is that a thing here? I'm being naive, but is that a thing here in the states? <clears throat> For petitions, you, like, it is. What? Yeah, for for polling uh, people outside of polling, giving literature. Oh, for polling specifically. Well, like, mm. are you saying? Oh. I guess I just haven't experienced like going in to vote, and there's some dude holding up a sign that's like. Although that's I'm, what I'm always in... boggles my mind. Like every poll I see ever is like, oh, so and so many Americans believe this and this. I, my right. first thought is always like, who did they ask? Like, who the fuck actually? Oh, you're where, talking where about that? Okay. 
Yeah. Now I, now I the got one, you. Well, no, you like, do they call you? Do you do you walk into them at the mall? Who's actually doing the polling and where no, and when ki- and how? Kid, I, I I did mean voting, like actually going to the polls and voting uh, for you know oh. elections and such. Okay, and and were the people trying? Were they polling to see who you voted for, or were they trying to persuade you to vote for their yeah, candidate? So, I, I maybe polling isn't the correct word. That's just how I've heard that yeah. place described. Like a polling center is what they yeah, yeah. call it over here to go do elections or whatever. But like going into the center, they always fucking like gather around the doors like a horde of hungry dogs. <laughs> And and just fucking you can't get through them until you like at least interact with them <laughs> to some degree. They're like bouncers, <laughs> basically, uh, which is really annoying. Um, so yeah, th- th- there's 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 a representative, or not a representative, sorry, a volunteer for every um, t- like political party in Australia right. at the front of every single polling center, every mm. single time, no matter which no matter which one I go uh, to, they always have volunteers there, and they they're always full of fucking slips to hand you on how to vote because we have preferential voting over here so okay. they try to like they try to like uh instruct you on where to place other parties as well in in your <laughs> preferences so it's like a full on it's like they they like hand you a what are they called infographic kind of thing right instructing you how to vote little pamphlet and it's just the most con yeah it's the most condescending bullshit ever i hate it <laughs> it should be i don't understand why it's legal it shouldn't be legal <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And is that not a is that not a thing in America? Like, if you go to vote for like the president or something, they don't have people at the front of those places. They do. I think they do. I mean, that's yeah. what an exit poll is, right? They literally ask you, "Hey, who did you just vote for?" So they can like well, predict it on the news and shit. Exiting is different. I, I'm fine with that because you've already made your decision and you, you've already voted. Oh, you They're not entering? trying to convince you at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's all. Yeah, <laughs> it's all pretty intense. It's there has to be wild. some there has to be some kind of like psychological element to it too. I was talking to my partner about it. Like, there has to be some degree of voters that choose based on how many rep, uh, how many volunteers are there for certain parties. Like, things just look better <laughs> if there's a more organized, you know, appeal to our senses. They, they should so like add really cookouts and stuff. Like, have a bounce <laughs> yeah. house for the kids. <laughs> yeah, like hot dogs, free hot dogs. <laughs> Do you, I'll vote for the first person who can make me laugh right now. Free burgers if you vote for this guy. <laughs> just Do you think there's like redditors who just go to the polling station and just like convince me? Why <laughs> yeah. should I vote for you? Oh, there absolutely like is. I, yeah. I was going when I was going into the center. I saw like multiple people having debates outside, like actually talking and interacting with like these people. Like for fun. Yeah, I'm like, what? What a fucking sad waste of time. You come into the polling center, you probably already know who you're voting for, or if or, or if you don't, you're just gonna. You know, do a donkey vote or whatever it's called, where you just vote random All, numbers anyway. What if, now hear me out, what if, going full circle, what if they're trying to waste their time so they don't have to bother you? What oh. if they're like the scam baiters oh God, of Holy polling shit. sites? They're scam baiting <laughs> your information. That's amazing. <laughs> they, what if they're, <laughs> they're saving me. That's so nice, yeah. dude. Yeah, oh. they're running resistance wow. so you don't have to. <laughs> they're they're true I don't know, I heroes. Think when I, all I could think when I walked by was what a pathetic loser that shows oh. <laughs> how, how nice I am. Uh, you gotta believe. <laughs> oh my lord. So going back to funny, goofy comedy kit, Boga, uh, where did you get your improv skills from? Oh, there was this, there was this guy I met at a polling center. Um, <laughs> <laughs> He had the best material. <laughs> yeah, he trained him everything he knows. <laughs> he came back to every election to learn new lessons. <laughs> yeah, he took me under his wing. Kit's um, first gig was know. yelling at who to vote for. Just to, on the Honestly, street. I, I think it was, t- I think a lot of it was Twitch chat, to be honest. Like, I, if I look, if I watch old stuff from five years ago, I don't really think it was that funny. It was just, like, I was calling scammers and wasting their time, but I think over the past handful of years i've just i don't know practiced and like twitch would drop memes in chat and i would say them and then i kind of honed in on i don't know my style of humor i just (laughs) never did improv before that what was that you never did improv before that or had any kind of not really uh, inclinations towards the comedic arts I watched a lot of whose line is it anyway if you're familiar with that oh yeah incredible show (laughs) 
And I would occasionally, you know, in, in like high school and stuff, we would play games like that. Uh, but not, I wasn't a part of, like, I didn't go to, to a school or anything mm. like that. I just yeah. asked because on your show, you know, there's really straightforward improv bits like wasting their time and frustrating yeah. them. But then you have some really elaborate ones like Crow Pro. It's like <laughs> alternate universe business. And like you, there's some pathways you go down that just to the uninitiated uh, viewer seem to make no sense. You know, it's true. I, I've been having some trouble uh, editing videos like that for YouTube as well, because um I don't want to get too far in the weeds on it, but it seems mm -hmm. like a lot of content these days. Um, you know, it's a t it's a 10 minute video about a very specific thing. And then how do I like this is a th multi day, 36 hour story about how I created a random business and, and the scammers pretend to be the president. And like there's just all these <laughs> random <laughs> like plot lines that don't make any <laughs> sense you're like how do you how could you possibly you know edit this so someone can understand but i think yeah i i think those things just happen randomly and um i like to think of it so my grandpa uh had alzheimer's and he would just rant and tell st he was very happy uh but he would rant and ramble and tell stories that made no sense and so a lot of time like that's where I draw the inspiration from is I just mm -hmm. I just start talking about crows in my backyard or whatever. And if the scammers go along with it, then I don't it, it becomes canon, you know. It's part of the <laughs> world now. It's part it's part of the universe. But So do you do you go into these uh like uh with a technique in mind or like content in mind? Like you wanna bring up a certain uh, you know, joke or gag or something like that, or, or does it just happen yeah. organically? Sometimes I do. Uh, I, like, it's actually frustrating to me um, <laughs> because I do have a list of ideas that I want to do, but because the scammers aren't in on it, right? Like, I can't. Yeah. You I gotta can't wait for someone to lead to you go in without with knowing. It. Right. Yeah. So sometimes it's frustrating because I have things that I think are funny or. Um, like for the long, I, I, I've played old school RuneScape for a really long time and f forever I thought, oh, what if I could get a scammer to complete tutorial Island? Like it would just be a, <laughs> if you ever played, <laughs> I, just, I just think it's a funny like goal to have, but it's so hard to try to figure out how to get a scammer to do that because they just Wait, don't. You, oh man. That would be perfect. You should get you should get them to play RuneScape and then scam, scam them in, in RuneScape. RuneScape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The yes. ultimate scam. Yes. <laughs> it's multi layers deep. Yeah, like I'll I'll trim your armor for you or whatever. Yeah, you get him invested in the game. He spends like fifty hours getting gold and stuff. He's really loving it. And then you yeah. come around the man that introduced RuneScape to him and you say right. you'll trim his armor. Or Doofy's armor or whatever, and, and then he's well, scammed. Oh. I won't quit until that's done. That's beautiful. Yes, please make that happen. That is beautiful. I, recently, it's, I did get a guy done. to... I had a dream of having a scammer edit a video for me, and I accomplished that <laughs> recently. It wasn't one of my videos, though. That that was oh. the ultimate goal, was to get them to, like, to trick them into editing a Kit Boga video, and then halfway through, they're like, wait, <laughs> what's going on? Even but, better if they're editing the their, their video on them. That would be fantastic. You just send them the files of the call after. That's funny. Yeah. That'd be perfect. <laughs> um, but most of it is just, it sort of just happens in the moment. And I I think I I think that's part of why um, I've been able to continue doing it for so long. Because I tend to get pretty, I don't know about you guys, but um, like... I get really into a particular hobby and then I just discard it and move on to the next one. That's like how I, <laughs> that's how I am in real life. Um, and, but I think because every week there's a new scammer who I haven't met and who knows what they're going to say or do, even though their scripts are usually pretty similar. Um, they're still people on the other end. So they have yeah. somewhat dynamic responses. It's like a roguelike I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's cool. I, I want to know how you haven't got like a 
Indian wanted poster out there basically like they they've put your face or voice or your sticks <laughs> up in like every call center <laughs> possible at this point. So that's I something how I think that's something that does exist. I bet he does. Uh I don't know if you guys watched the new Mark Rober, Jim Browning video, but they had a, in the video, they had a group chat that was like 50,000 people, all scammers. And they they knew the second that uh, Mark Rober and Jim Browning sent people to India to infiltrate, they knew immediately. And they followed them around the city, like from the airport and reported them to each other through that group chat. So I have no doubt that Kit has, Kit has that same level of infamy at these call centers. There's definitely a, a, I describe it like a, I don't know, the boogeyman effect where sometimes <laughs> when they sense that something isn't normal or I'm really giving them a hard time or or whatever, they'll say things like, is this Jim Browning or is this Kit <laughs> Boga or is this? Mm-hmm. And it's funny because if you've watched Jim's videos, I don't sound anything like Jim. I don't but... think any human sounds anything like Jim Browning. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, just, he's like a the god. Boogeyman. Yeah, his voice is just yeah. so distinct. The boogeyman. Yeah. Baba Yaga. <laughs> yeah. So I think is there's like British these myths. Guy? There's myths of, and, and rumors of of these scam baiters, but they don't always really know. Like, they don't really know who Jim is or watch all of his content. But something weird is happening and they go, oh, my God, it could be it could be Jim. It could be (laughs) to be fair, though, they they got you. You know that if they say your name, you have to divulge your information and be like, oh, you got me. (laughs) Yeah, I was tricking you. You figured it out. Uh, I never do gift cards. I never do. I think it's so funny personally. But (laughs) I'm like, who's have you, that? What is what is that? Have, have have you ever been successfully guilt tripped by a scammer? Have you ever felt their plight? Ooh. Um in what I mean, okay, so there's definitely moments where I have after after the fact spent a long time thinking about what just transpired, if that makes sense. <laughs> so there was a guy who uh, recently this year, I think it was this year, I redeemed the Google Play card and he was screaming in a way that I've never, like in agony as if his whole life had been destroyed. And at first it's kind of like magical and wonderful because he's (laughs) he's a scammer, right? (laughs) (laughs) But then this guy in particular, I remember thinking afterwards, what on earth is going on in his life that got him to a point where this $500 Google Play card is like he's screaming as (laughs) if his life is over. So I don't know if that answers your questions, but there's definitely times where I think, oh man, there's a whole other you know, you, you don't you don't know everything. Not that I'm justifying it. In no way would I justify scamming someone. I don't think it could ever be justified. Yeah. But like, yeah. it would be. It, some of the screams that you hear from them are really like desperate. Definitely, I don't yeah. know if it's desperation yeah. for the the monetary reward, desperation for some kind of reward after spending forty hours with you, or yeah. if it's like <laughs> their their wife and kids are currently being held hostage by the owners of this. Uh, right. call center scheme and I do th- <laughs> that was I their think one that's ticket r- out of there right I've heard rumors and, and sometimes people will I assume they're like trolls but sometimes people will message me and say like oh Kit you're, you're picking on these you know poor people and this is the only thing they can do otherwise their kids will die and it's that's oh, just not off. yeah it's just not the actual situation and when you I've had the opportunity to talk to a bunch of these scammers before and they'll tell you there are other jobs, uh, but I make more money here. Right. It's just I could go get a real well, call wait center job, them. but they pay me three X here at this scam call center. So also wait to paint them as the victim in this transaction. Like, yeah, this fucking right. bottom feeder who's trying to rob all the grannies. How dare you right. pick on him? Fuck yeah. you. That's, I, just, that's, the internet. that's just the internet. It, they it will really always, yeah. Have you they noticed always that? Always <laughs> try and do that. Yeah. I, I, I've noticed it with everything. Yeah. Literally fucking everything. They somehow always try and find a way to paint the objective worst people in a good light. And like, yeah. there's actually always two and sides to I've every situation. It, and some I've of them are like actual. On the podcast. Go ahead, Jackson. I was going to say, I've, I've said it before on the podcast, but I've noticed a trend online 
where, and this is very particular, but I've noticed a trend online where thieves are being like praised now. Like, no, oh, yeah, it, yeah. It, like somehow it's a noble crime to take from other people if you're in desperate need, like or Robin Hood, in some kind of quantifiable need. Yeah, well, no, Robin Hood <laughs> divvied it out to people in need. He didn't keep right. it for himself. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the, the people on like Twitter and other social media and stuff are genuinely just encouraging, endorsing, mm. and complimenting thieves now, and it's just. I mean, it's you remember baffling. the. Uh, That's not what society should be. You aim remember the for. TikTok trend with devious licks? It was yeah. literally just, hey, let's hype up stealing. <laughs> like, okay, <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> Fuck you. Ugh. But even, gotta, even with I'll that whole. Uh, even with that whole, like, justifying and siding with the bad guys, some of those scammers, too. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure a handful of them are desperate or in a bad situation, but some of them are just genuinely terrible people. Like,. There have been times, mm -hmm. kid, I think, where you pretended like you fell or something really bad happened and they were just <laughs> like, okay, I don't care. I hope you die. Yeah. Give me your money. Hurry up. You know, it's like no compassion yeah. whatsoever. I do think that I've met some, what would the word be, sociopath type. Yeah, absolutely. Just zero empathy. Um, there are other, occasionally there are scammers who seem to give up. It, it, give up's the wrong word. Uh they'll they'll decide that they don't want to scam me if i really lay it on thick like i'm an old lady who actually just a couple of weeks ago i had a guy and we were only 20 minutes into the call and i said something like well after the accident things have been really hard and blah, blah. <laughs> and it was like oh what accident and i just said something about a medical thing and he's like well sir your computer's all taken care of have a good day and he hung up <laughs> it was like oh, oh I, I guess he has an ounce of humanity left yeah weird. but other and guys would just I, double I, down they'd be whenever, like oh great <laughs> whenever i've watched your content i've like i've really hoped for a moment like that where like the the, the mask slips up not mask but you know the the facade slips up and like oh, yeah. they come to their senses <laughs> and humanity restores itself to them and they 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 uh, tell you about their entire operation and how right. how uh, they'll they'll now go to the they'll now be whistleblowers whatever they'll join with right. you to bring a, <laughs> bring an end to this organization or something but you it never happens and it hurts me yeah well, I've had like once or twice I've had some situations sort of like that um, but. Not very often. And mm -hmm. back back when I first started, I would have more what I would call heart to heart type yeah. conversations afterwards where I'd almost debate them and be like, what are you doing with your life? But I found that uh, usually they would just lie. And a lot of times there's a manager listening to the call or nearby anyway. So it's not like they're going to say, you're right. I'm scamming and I'm ashamed of myself because the manager's going to, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. like so I, I don't really do that anymore just because. And I find that really funny, too, because some of the things that you have these people do is just like absolute nonsense. You had one guy like <laughs> sing the Declaration of Independence and like, True. like I don't know why. How do they think yeah. this is going to get them money? I don't <laughs> understand it. Maybe it's just the desperation, I guess. I suppose. Uh, but if they had their manager listening, you think he'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> no, he'd be over there with his hand on his chest. Just to do it's that a pledge of allegiance. <laughs> <laughs> like, God bless. <laughs> he rises from the <laughs> desk. <laughs> for the fifth in, uh, time today. In the uh, Mark Rober videos, you'll see like, or the Jim Browning videos, you'll see they don't really let the call center workers have their phones either because they don't want them to steal the, dare I call them leads, that's that's like a sales term, the, the victim's information. So, which is kind of a shame because uh, there are times where they are desperate enough that I could get them to like record videos or do stupid things, but they don't have a phone. So it's <laughs> like physically impossible. Uh, but sometimes I had one guy, you've heard of uh, choosing beggars on Reddit. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was one guy who, who, instead of the $500 gift card, I bought him a $100 gift card and he didn't want it. And so I told him if he held up a sign saying, our choosing beggars, that I would get him a gift <laughs> card. And he was like, <laughs> you know, he doesn't get it, but he took a picture of himself holding the, the choosing beggars sign, which I thought was funny. 
<laughs> yeah, that's so good. One of my f- one of my favorite ones that I've watched of of your little schemes, one of your videos, is the one where you got the guy to uh, pretend to be Santa Claus, <laughs> and oh man, it was brilliant. And I I just couldn't imagine a situation where. Uh, like I'm in a call center or I'm working in a call center or something and an employee next to me is uh, like pretending to be Santa singing uh, Christmas <laughs> tunes and like that's just a normal day. Well, it's, <laughs> like, right. that's just, the well thing I is guess for them the normal is weird. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, and again, I keep referencing this, but it's a great video that gives a huge insight into like the call centers. In the yeah. new Jim Browning video, he spends like 30, 40 minutes on the phone with them telling them their real name and instead of being afraid like the first time he says it to the girl he's like no your name's not actually cynthia buckwater (laughs) your name is uh you know whatever it was priya i think it was and instead of being afraid she goes like how did you know and they like they all treat it like a magic trick so then yeah everyone and everyone came and gathered around they were laughing they were giggling like tell us her real name to my left what's her name and they tell her their name and it, they they treat it like it's summer camp it's very yeah odd. they they in no way like hang up the phone or have a fear reaction they they just keep going who are you who are you mm-hmm. yeah who are how you? are you doing how are you doing are you like doing a magic this? trick who are you yeah. who, who are who are you yeah i do think it's i i run across <laughs> a lot of uh i think there's a lot of drug usage and, and stuff too so i don't know if that has anything oh, really? to do with it but um they they don't summer camp is a good way to describe it it feels like a bunch of kids who don't really they haven't fully thought out what they've gotten themselves into and they think that they'll never get in trouble and it doesn't matter and then they supply them with drugs and alcohol and lists of old people to call and they have at it <laughs> what the fuck i didn't know there was like drug and alcohol abuse at, the, at these uh yeah these me neither well, from what I from what I've seen, uh, and there are times where you like, I, I don't think this is a. Uh, I, there are times where I swear I'm talking to a guy. They're they're freaking out. They're mad, and you hear them like go do a line or something, and they come back and they're like, <laughs> and then they <laughs> feel crazy. crazy. They're like, yeah, you it's scared me good. Well, fuck yeah. <laughs> well, they're like, it's sometimes it's night and day. They go from being. Like they hate you and want to murder you and your entire family, and then they come back and they're they're on cloud nine. So uh, yeah, <laughs> God, I don't Dude, know if you if weird. you were <laughs> scamming old ladies who were crying all day long. Like, what do you what would you do, right? Well, they've probably been doing it for so long where it's just numb to them. If they had any humanity in them, I feel like it would have been stripped away by now just from the right. sheer monotony and continuation of it. What is what does India do? Is it mostly India that uh, these scam companies run out of? Mm-hmm. It's I think something for like ninety eight percent of them, yeah. I think. For like the big call number. centers, I there's think some it's in, very in Africa, though, I believe, like some smaller ones. And yeah, so no, those princes are real. <laughs> <laughs> does the does the Indian government <laughs> not do anything about it? They do, because kind of, it's just it's. it's like I said, it's hard, and a lot of it, I guess, for the preference from what I've read, uh, a lot of it does seem to have some level of government uh, overlooking. You know, perhaps yeah. they're in cahoots to a certain level, yeah. but at you know, at the end of the day, I think the majority of them are located in one specific part of India, and I'm blanking on its name. Maybe Kit it's or Andrew Sector knows. Sector five. Sector yeah. five. Yes, Sector I was going to say version. I was going to say version five, but that's like some <laughs> Halo shit. But yeah, uh, so is Sector Five. What the fuck is Sector Five? It's where all the scam calls are, Jackson. God, how do you not know that? They're like quarantined <laughs> into a scam city called Sector Five. <laughs> Pretty much, it's like yeah. a cyberpunk for There's calls. There's a lot of infrastructure there the too. Fuck? So. Yeah, it's it's also easy to pick up and move. So, like Kit mentioned earlier, they have a legitimate business attached to the scam center. So it's like you have a cover, you have a real actual income coming in etc but if they get found out and they are really getting cracked down they go oh no my shell corporation i will dismantle that move down yeah. the street and just bring yeah, everyone right. with me and there's another call center down the block that's open yeah they don't whatever. care it doesn't matter I think to them. The, the other element that i've read about too is that 
And it kind of makes sense that when they're prosecuting this stuff, uh, I've heard that um, a lot of their criminal, uh, what would you say, justice system is backed up. And you've got, let's say, you've got murderers and all kinds of people, like things that are happening locally in India that need to be dealt with. No, and then these guys come are first. dealing with foreigners and they're not as, again, I'm not trying to throw too much shade, but. Like I've heard, <laughs> I've read that it's just not as high of a priority as well. Um, well, also, which... do they pay taxes on their income from scamming? Because if they do, why the Ooh. fuck would the government care? I mean, my assumption is they don't because they're getting Google Play cards and stuff. But <laughs> but if they did, <laughs> if they send one true. Google Play card to the government for each scam, <laughs> yeah, do they pay their taxes? <laughs> There's in a Google guy Play just cards? scratching it off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So oh, how no. this will pay for the roads. So they they then in turn do they resell the gift cards to like flippers yeah, online yeah, yeah. to get actual money yeah, then? Said. Yeah. That's what I figured. Um what I want to know is is that the same for like every type of uh you know you, the example I'm thinking of right now is like G2A, you know where they sell yeah. Steam cards or yeah, not yeah. Steam cards but Steam game codes. Is that the same? Like do, do do scammers do that as well? Like, are they selling well uh, <laughs> scammed copies of games? All I know is I stopped using it, but I don't know the the truth. I think that I'm sure. So I remember one of my siblings, you know, years ago, got a gift card for Christmas that they didn't want and sold it on eBay, you know, for ten bucks cheaper, and that was completely legitimate, right? But. I, but you gotta wonder what what are the percentages that are I guess that's in my mind like how many of those uh, Steam games or gift cards are um, legit versus it's a scam and I don't know the answer yeah I just I, I don't know I yeah, it doesn't make sense from like a supply and demand uh, perspective like where are these codes coming from in the first place that they can then yeah. sell them at a discounted price from the actual marketplace I've never understood G2A or I, I, I get that it's a seller marketplace like anyone can sign up to sell on G2A it's not like actually you know regulated or anything like that but like I've just never understood where those codes actually come from but someone in chat Seems like they made a good point where they said almost every seller in G2A purchased the game card, uh, the game keys, so the game keys from Steam with stolen credit cards, which would, I guess, make sense. Oh, but that is a lot of fucking stolen credit cards. I knew a guy who would buy Steam games on sale or when they were like on summer sale or on, um, what was the, was it like the Humble Indie Bundle? Is that still around? Mm -hmm. yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Humble um, Indie Bundle. Yeah, and he would buy them. Someone's like taking notes. I don't know if this is a good business opportunity, but they, he would do that. And then later when they came off sale, he would post it on like G2, G2A and stuff because, you know, it was 60% off and now he can sell it 20% off or something. But but I don't think that that is the, the majority of the. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's weird. Also, if you're buying game codes with stolen credit cards, you have a stolen credit card. Couldn't you just use that to buy stuff? Uh, they, <laughs> get, stuff? they cancel it. Uh, it gets canceled like pretty much instantly, and it's easier to get caught. I'm guessing. So if you yeah. just buy like Steam codes or something like that, you get a little True. more bang for your okay. buck. Would be my guess. Mm -hmm. They're probably okay, hoping so that the, it... it's a way. Of... Yeah, goes under the radar. Sorry, go on. No, no. Yeah, yeah. They're siphoning off like small amounts of funds from it instead of big purchases. Yeah. Lately, I've seen the scammers, they'll try to get you to sign up for um, like a Bitcoin, some, something like a Coinbase or whatever. That way, um, you know, you upload your driver's license and you pass the verification oh and now God. they have your, they can buy Bitcoin under your, <laughs> under your name, which is... That's not... What has there ever been a scammer that has actually impressed you with their with their procedures or their ingenuity or their uh, their scamming yeah. methods? There is one that comes to mind, and uh, the, occasionally people will say, "Like a kid, don't they just watch your like? Don't they watch all the like Jim's videos and stuff? And now they know how to scam people better." And the <laughs> I think the 
the evidence that suggests the contrary because one time I had a scam organization call me and they said, hi, we're with Microsoft. Your computer has some problems and we need to, oh, oh no, it was, they needed to refund me $200 because I overpaid for some service. And then they pretended, they, they said, you know, connect to your bank account. Let's see if we can get you the refund. And they said, you know what? It's going to take 24 to 48 hours. Call us back if you have any problems. And they waited <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and they called me back like three days later and then tried to scam me. And I've never had any other. It felt so much more real because they yeah. waited. Uh, I, I used to joke about when when the IRS scam was a thing when they would call and say that you owe taxes to the IRS, if you're familiar with that one, um, I would I would laugh because if you've had the unfortunate uh, issue of having to call the real IRS, you'll wait on the phone for an hour or two. And the whole time it just says, like, hang up and go to IRS.gov. We don't want to talk to you. But those scammers, the second you dialed the number, like immediately picked up. We're like, hello, uh, I'm with the IRS. Let me help you. So anyway, I, that was it's a simple, subtle thing, but just not immediately trying to scam me, I think, was the most impressive <laughs> thing that I've seen <laughs> so far. Displaying some level of patience. Yeah. 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 It's not it's not easy to actually like engage with scammers. It seems easy because you obviously know how to navigate it. But I imagine just like a normal layman like me trying to like. Yeah. joke with scammers or fuck with them <laughs> i'd end up actually just losing money or my bank account <laughs> or something <laughs> i'm always so scared yeah. of yeah. answering unknown I'm, I'm tempted calls. i'm tempted to always pick up and fuck with them but i'm like yep. what if they yeah. know what if, know. They what, if they, me? what if they trace my phone to my exact location yeah. and then they send their money collecting van and then I have to give them money? In RuneScape, oh, I learned that lesson already. Like, I used to fuck with scammers and then I got scammed while trying to fuck <laughs> with the scammers <laughs> knowing the whole time. Oh, tell us the story. Because there's, there's always some level to it that you don't prepare for that they did. So, like, oh. when I was fucking with these scammers... I knew everything that was happening except one crucial mechanic where if you trade with someone one tile over, you move to them instead of the other way around. And what oh. this did is it popped my character out of a safe zone and into combat and I insta died because of it. <laughs> <laughs> really? But the whole time I knew it was a scam and then I, I'd already gotten like an extra like 20 mil myself for the counter scam, but I just got yeah. greedy because I thought I could get more, but I didn't know God, one crucial mechanic. God. Yeah. So I learned the hard way, like, uh, it's just bad <laughs> enough being scammed, but it's even yeah. worse being scammed when you know you're being scammed. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's, just, it's scary. It's dangerous. I was, I was driving home from the warehouse one day, and I had this voicemail from my insurance, and it sounded totally legit. Like, it was like a normal woman on the phone, and she was like, hi, my name is Ann with an insurance, and... We noticed a thing with your account. Call us back at this number at any time. And I was like, okay, you know, fuck it. I'm driving home. I'll just take care of this. Yeah. So what I should have done is Googled the phone number to make sure it was the right one. Mm. But I didn't. And I, I called a scam number. But it like first the phone was answered and there was nothing. It was just silence. And I was like, uh, hello? And then a man just goes, hello? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, uh, hello, hello, is this is this insurance? And with, <laughs> and with the thickest Indian accent, he goes, yes, this is your insurance. And I immediately just hung up. Yeah, and I was so terrified. I was like, oh, fuck, he has my number now. Oh, no, 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 Why no. Why ask what happened to Anne? <laughs> Anne was the one with the insurance. Oh, fuck. That's hard. I, I was just so terrified. I was like, he's got all my info now. Please, fucking Christ. Yeah. No. Your car just fucking stops in the middle of the road. <laughs> My I little do, dashboard <laughs> has his face on it. You're not getting away. Yeah. <laughs> I do think there's some, like, as much as I don't really encourage people to do it because, uh, like Charlie was saying, you can end up giving up information or you, or you think that you know what you're doing and then you make a mistake. But um, there is there are a lot of situations where um the scammers can get your name and your social security number and your bank account information and all of this stuff but then what like they don't necessarily have the capability of 
now opening a Best Buy credit card. You know what I mean? Like they mm. don't have – there's still other uh, levels that they they can't bypass. Uh, and, and what they would need is someone here in the United States, let's say, willing to cooperate to – to then exploit that yeah. information. So uh, I don't think you necessarily need to be that worried that you, uh, I'm just, I, I hope you're not losing about, like, sleep over the insurance no, lady. Is what no, I'm, I stop I'm, caring. I'm a giant internet celebrity already. <laughs> People want a piece of me. It's fine. Okay. So, it's okay. Uh, I'm just, I, I'd be worried about like, maybe not so much like the monetary aspect of it or me falling for the scam because I know yeah. I wouldn't give over like financial information or anything like that. I just don't want to attract the ire of obviously malicious people who don't have yeah. much to lose in the first place. So I don't want them to ha like hack into my computer or my phone. And Jackson then, doesn't you know, want Look through Indians. my webcam and see my flaccid penis or something. Jackson doesn't <laughs> want Indians <laughs> flying all the way to Australia to kick his ass. That's what yeah, he's afraid imagine of. they did though just for Jackson, <laughs> just to beat the shit out yeah. of him. Just to make an example, yeah. Oh. Spend thirty hours on a plane funny. just to whip him in the dick. Yeah, they got Oof. Or they fucking I go in to vote the next day and they're there <laughs> at the door. <laughs> no voting for me. <laughs> then, then I get fined by the government because we have mandatory voting and I'm not, <laughs> I couldn't make it to the booth. Uh, so the whole thing. So, kid, I got one last question, probably. Um, okay. You you are it seems you know able to do all this scam baiting full time because you have such a large Twitch community and also a big successful YouTube channel and this and that. If you weren't scam baiting full time, what would you see yourself doing? I know you push a lot of software dev and programming, or would you yeah. stay related to this? What do you think you'd be doing? Uh, if the internet disappeared or if the scammers all went away mm -hmm. <laughs> i prob probably something with software particularly ai i think uh has captured my attention i think it's uh, i think terrifying is the word i usually use for ai because it's it's both <laughs> awesome it feels like it has a ton of amazing benefits and equally uh um terrible things so but probably Scary implications yeah well to uh, you while well, we were talking about the the elon musk live streams earlier i saw one on reddit yesterday where they were using voice synthesis to deep fake elon's voice and he was saying like sign up on this website and i'll send you money <laughs> and you know that stuff's gonna that'll happen it's just gonna keep getting more and more uh intense but right. uh there's also really amazing uses for ai or ai it'll be like ai wars the ai wars of 2025 they'll be fighting battles <laughs> fake <laughs> person versus edition. fake person and your <laughs> yeah. scam bot will be at the pref uh, like the front yeah. lines basically i hope so <laughs> dude you'll be ready and granny yeah, edna is going to be leading the entire political movement you you'll be scamming all the other ai yeah. you'll be in control um, yeah, I think probably we still something have like that. Some time, a couple of years before the AIs get scary. Right now, they're very <laughs> clumsy because every single time they trot out a new AI, it turns into a Nazi literally within five minutes. Sure. Yeah. You guys know those stories where, like, <laughs> yeah. Amazon yeah. or Facebook or whatever, they'll put their AI on Twitter, Twitter like, yeah. hey, talk yeah. to our AI. I think yeah. the last time they did it, within 10 minutes, the AI started tweeting out photos of Jewish journalists with like a target on their face. It was, oh, uh, just... it, it was, the, it learned immediately to spam the N word and just oh, put that God. in like every sentence. Yeah. Look at, um, if you get a chance and you're bored, there is a website called Papers with Code that has a ton of stuff or, um, OpenAI just released, I think it's called Dolly 2. Dolly is fucking scary. Dolly yeah. too is a painting algorithm. It's what what so, is Dolly? It's so good. Has it learned how to play chess? <laughs> no, but no. if you asked you it to make a, a picture, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah if yeah, you yeah, said, yeah, I, I want one. a picture of chess, a chess board in space, <laughs> in the theme of this, in this color range, it yeah. would do it. Uh, like, it's insane how how good it does it is um, shocking how it is accurate. Yeah. it's it it's is like uncanny valley good yeah it's not perfect in any way but if you you know you can squint and it looks just how like it it is uh, i'll say this i know it's not perfect but it will 
it could potentially put like 90% of all our artists out there out of business. Like, <laughs> well, it, I don't know though. It's still in the beginning phases, right? Like machine learning by nature gets yeah. better over time. Yeah. And just for, for the yeah, record, like, Dolly I mean, 2 is, if you're familiar with Dolly in general, uh, not to get like nerdy about it, but Dolly 2 is light years better. Like, and wow, it's brand really? new. It's brand new. So like there's a, there's a subreddit for it of people because only like a thousand people have access to it but oh okay um it's very good <laughs> it's it's like i was gonna say how do i use it i was gonna go onto it and ask for a picture <laughs> of jackson clark from the official podcast and see what comes up <laughs> but i don't know if it'll put artists out of business or not like will people learn maybe like is it possible some, that for sure do like imagine digital if artists middle maybe? Or, like yeah, that's what I mean. Like, if you're a game yeah. studio or something, you need concept art. Like, it will be true. so much easier to just pay 50 bucks for the Dolly API than hiring a dude to that's draw true. stuff anymore, you know? You were yeah, I feel like uh, you get more of a personal touch from, like, hiring that person. You can make... Act- it's it's probably easier to communicate with that person and make changes than it is to... Yeah. F- like, keep but, rolling the dice wow. on the AI. Kit, you were not yeah. kidding about Dolly 2 being better. I'm checking out their like little promotional <laughs> website, and this thing is incredible. Yeah, oh my nice. god. Yeah. Dolly 2. Um, so yeah, I think there's going to be more and more AI projects like this coming out that are both equally amazing, and <laughs> you just want... So I'm, I'm a big Battlestar Galactica fan, and if you've seen that or know of it, the whole... Uh, hashtag uh, it's not a spoiler the whole premise of the show is um we created ai machines to help us and then the machines learned the best way to help humans is to destroy all humans right right like to kill us because (laughs) we're our own problem so uh, admittedly when i think of ai in the back of my mind i'm thinking battlestar galactica but yeah (laughs) we'll see maybe that uh, the AI solution to that question of how to best help humans will be to make love with us, and then they'll develop high, high, f- uh, like high tech form sex bots. Finally, we're getting there. They don't that, just that's look what like... you're hoping for. <laughs> well, if the inverse is us dying, then yeah, I'm hoping for the sex bot future. Personally. Okay, yeah, yeah. It reminds me of the like death by snoo snoo Futurama stuff for some reason. Yeah. We've always talked about how, like, uh, you know, like pornography is the leading innovator in in uh, technology. Like, it's what drives technology forward. So I do think that uh, AI won't get good until there is an on on the market uh, sex bot of some variety. They're probably. Um, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 I think they're the first thing is gonna be, be they'll have like deep faker favorite celebrity into porn or your Facebook crush or whatever. I'm sure that's gonna be a genre. Mm. I know there already are some like really high profile people who get targeted by deep faked porn stuff. Like they'll they'll say we're going to post this video if you don't you know comply with our demands. But it's a they they take um they t- it's like taking an already made video but then deep faking their face onto it. But it looks like some of the deep fake stuff out there. Have you seen um Deep fake Tom Cruise yet? Yes, that's really good on TikTok. Yeah. It's so convincing. Right. And the idea is although I've met that that studio and they're they're trying really hard to be uh what's the word? Very ethical in their approach, but but you can imagine people who aren't ethical uh could use similar technology yeah. to post a picture well although yeah like they could deep fake an entire episode of the podcast but but it's a different oh, sponsor finally we'd never have to work again oh <laughs> that'd be perfect let's get there what what should what should get defaked and it's like ten thousand times better as well they're just That's way funny. more funny and more charismatic oh, and, they, and they look handsomer on webcam too yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, i was joking about doing a deep fake um like uh tiktok react channel just to see what would happen like just to see if people would not notice and still like the content but i haven't gotten around to doing it yet there's so many interesting applications for this kind of stuff and uh, you you're right it is a scary 
future possibly um yeah i don't really mm. <laughs> i don't like thinking about it too much so i'm glad you're on the front Sorry. lines kit, uh designing <laughs> that robot for us and just make sure yeah. you code in that i am a friend yes jackson yeah, gets to have her. sex with it <laughs> I'll make I a note. First dibs. They'll just I get be first like an, dibs on the sex spot application. An if else <laughs> statement that like if if you decide sex is good, then hit up this guy first. Right. Yeah. I'll bake it into the into the and code. use an Indian scam scam <laughs> accent to talk to me. Oh jeez, the only way I can get there. Alrighty, I think we got to wrap though. I think Charlie, you've got a thing on right. Yeah, I have to head up. Okay. Um, Me too. I have a lot of really important things to do. <laughs> yeah, like robots and stuff. He's got an old woman who's waiting on hold right now, and she just bought the cards. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having right, me. Yeah, so thank you. Yeah, no, thank you for joining us. Yeah. It, was, it was a pleasure. Absolutely. Thank pleasure. you so Can much, you, uh, Kit. We out, all love your stuff. Shout out your stuff. Shout out your stuff, like Twitch and your YouTube and stuff like that, so people can go find you. Oh yeah, uh, just go into Google and type in the official podcast, and mm. yeah. oh, fuck yeah, uh, perfect. No. It's a it's an infinite loop. They'll just keep going back. Yeah, and they'll dude. watch this episode. They'll get to the end and then fuck straight yeah. back to the start. Yeah. Highest view episode awesome. due to recursion. Oh yes, just watch this episode. What episode number is it? Just watch this episode over and over. Two eighty six. No, I Kip Kip Boga will you'll find most things. Yeah, you search for it. it's Twitch. I, you do mo you do a lot of mostly streams, right? As well, like you stream everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So it's twitch.tv slash kitboga k i t b o g a. Go check him out. Uh, watch his stuff. He, he's great. It's great. It's reward people doing good things like this, like wasting scammers' time because they're the only thing standing in between uh, uh, us uh, and Indian nuclear warfare. <laughs> yeah, Indian <laughs> scammers and your grandmother. So. Uh uh -oh. go, go defend your grandmother by I tried yeah. burger. I tried really hard to convince Twitch to let me do a promotion where sub subscribing would be half off if they used a Google Play card or like an, an Amazon <laughs> card. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. They wouldn't let me do it. I was like, I'll eat the cost. I don't care. I just think it'd be funny. But yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Damn you, Twitch. Running everything. Now you're gonna well, have to thanks, move guys. over to YouTube. No, thank yeah, you. Thank you so uh, much. Thank you very much for coming on. Yeah. 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 And thank you to everyone who listened. Uh, Patreon.com slash the official podcast if you want to support us uh, and make mm -hmm. the official podcast a reality. Because this has uh, all been hypothetical so far for 2086. <laughs> <laughs> <episodes. laughs> we promise. Yeah. Oh, no. Make sure you use your accurate information on the Patreon. And nothing bad will happen. <laughs> um, yeah. we, we have bonus <laughs> episodes. We've got. Kai and I just finished watching uh, the Halo TV series, so those final two watch-along episodes will be up God. over the next two weeks. The things we do for mm. you. And yeah, that's everything. Uh, thank you to my co-hosts, and thank you again to Kit Boga for joining us, and thank you again to you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye.